Transmission start. Welcome to Where Did the Road Go? Join us as we wander off the path and explore lost history, consciousness, the paranormal, unexplained mysteries, alternative thought, and much more. We are present on the web at wheredidtheroadgo.com. Now here is your host, Soraya. Welcome to this edition of Where Did the Road Go? Tonight, my guest was supposed to be Jack Brewer, but he had some issues and had to reschedule. So, what I am airing instead is what we were originally just going to do as a roundtable later in the night, which is a conversation with myself, Ren Collier, Red Pill Junkie, and Adam Sane. And we are discussing the movie Extraordinary, the Stan Romanak story. And if you're not familiar with Stan... Let's just say there are some issues with his story, and we're going to get into all of those. You don't actually have to watch the documentary to listen to this show. Uh, You can, and after hearing this, you might want to, um, if even for a laugh at some of the absolutely terrible hoaxed video and stuff. But I felt that this was an important show because this stuff really needs to be exposed and just kind of flushed away as much as possible. There's so much nonsense out there and so much, well, BS, and this is a great example of it. So we're going to talk about Stan Romanak and his story and this documentary that is available on Netflix. So, uh, yeah, here you go. All right, welcome to this roundtable edition of Where Did the Road Go? I'm here with Red Pill Junkie. Hello, everybody. Adam Sane of Conspiranormal. Hello, hello. And Ren. Hey, guys. And uh, of the Liminal Room blog. I was going to say podcast, but <laughs> you don't have a podcast yet. Not yet. yet. You don't have a podcast? Yet. <laughs> What's going on here? It's in the works. <laughs> um, and and uh, Red Pill, I have a message for you. Okay. This, uh, this comes from a fan of yours, Jose, in Toronto. He said, uh, the Empty Brain Roundtable, what a show. Uh, what can I say? And Red Pill Junkie, once again, such an insightful presence. If it's possible in the future to send him a shout out from Jose in Toronto. So here you go. Here's your shout out. So cool to have a Latino on your show. Have a great day as always. Muchas gracias, Jose. And yeah, you pretty much killed it on that, uh, empty brain round table. Oh, thanks. Soraya. You, 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 Yes. Could you could you do an episode where um, Red Pill just reads the phone book? <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten that request a few times. <laughs> I've had that request for Steph Young as well. <laughs> Cl- clearly, you should think about you know doing audio books for people, Red Pill. <laughs> okay, and then uh, when you guys make uh, when you guys write a book. I will offer myself to to do the audio version. <laughs> all right, all right. Sounds good. Um, so tonight, what we're going to do is uh, probably more than anything else, debunk and take apart this documentary uh, called Extraordinary. And uh, let me get the actual proper name of it. That is not the one do I want. Do you guys remember the uh, how, what the rest of it was? Uh, it's, it's just I, a, think, I think it's Extraordinary, the Stan Romanek story. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. accurate. Yeah. And uh, I always mix up Jonathan Reed and Stan, Stan Romanek when I hear their names because they're both such blatant hoaxers. Mm. Um, but I, I think Jonathan Reed has, has way more crazy in his story with the screaming alien and everything. Um, Romanek at least tries not to make it sound totally off the wall. Like he tries to sort of keep it in proximity of what we already normally hear about. Um, But I'm going to, I'm going to let Ren start this because Ren was, I cut Ren off because he was talking about this because you've never even heard of Stan Romanek. Yeah. I'd I'd never heard of Stan Romanek before I started this, watching this documentary. I never heard the name. Um, I wasn't familiar with him at all. So when I started watching it, um, I thought, okay, this is cool. Like he sees a UFO at the beginning. Um, it's kind of a very mundane sort of sighting. He's got the the cool footage. 
uh, then he starts, you know, goes to this kind of section where he's receiving these like channeled, you know, equations in his head during a, a hypnotic regression. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I like channeled stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on board. Uh, he starts, you know, ex it shows like, you know, his physical symptoms of like his abduction and stuff. And especially like around his wrists and stuff. And I was like, okay, it's kind of cool. Like I was, I was making the comparison in my head to like stigmata. I was like, okay, you know, he, he saw a celestial object and he's receiving knowledge and now he's exhibiting stigmata, um, you know, because I'm, I'm looking at this from sort of my own, you know, personal worldview. And right. mm -hmm. then <laughs> it got to the videos of the gray <laughs> aliens that he saw. And my heart just hit the floor. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> uh, I actually had to pause and like take a walk for a minute because I was like, this this took a turn <laughs> into the absurd. I was like, mm. and yeah, so many, this documentary brings up so many questions. <laughs> that it does. Um yeah, those videos. I think I think the the main video is known as like the peekaboo video or something like that. Uh -huh. If you've not seen it, Google it on YouTube. There's plenty of versions of it out there. But it basically looks like a puppet popping up or around his window right after he sets up a camera, and uh, then he does a really bad acting job of seeming surprised that it's there. <laughs> Yeah, that that acting job is he just sort of he's like woo and just sort of jumps up a little bit. I'm like, that's not the reaction I would have if I saw that. Yeah, and there's another video later on with what he calls like grandpa or something like that, where the alien just very slowly leans in and stares at him. Yeah, that's, he just that's films the full it. body version alien. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The full and one team. And then, and then it just kind of slowly pulls back and he doesn't react in like any kind of fear. He's just like, What's that? Where did it go? I yeah. can't find it. It's like, oh dear God. Yeah, and that, and you don't see its feet, and it's. I mean, if you're familiar with sort of like uh, movies and stuff too, it was very obviously trying to ape on the one scene from the Communion movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's a good point. Yeah, it, he was trying to sort of do that same sort of scene, but the his reactions during that scene were what really sort of killed it for me because I was like, what? what is this reaction he's having? Because this is, I'm pretty sure if I saw that in real life, I would be hyperventilating and, and like unable to say anything, much less be like, Oh no, where did it go? I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Yeah. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. What is that? That's peculiar. <laughs> well, you have to, you have to remember that he sees them all the time though. Yeah. Right. So he's, he's not going to be as surprised as you or I would be. Yeah. But yet, I, but yet he claims I'm, to I'm be joking. freaked out about that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Red Pill, what are your thoughts on Stan? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I guess by, by the time uh, his name became prominent in the UFO circles, I have become, I don't know, either disenchanted or not that interested in that kind of... Uh, abductee narrative anymore you know i was mm -hmm. I, I was searching for different answers and I, I wasn't trying to find answers to that kind of narrative of yeah aliens are coming here abducting people taking their dna and you know making hybrids out of them i was searching for for something else because i i, I by then i had become disenchanted about that kind of answer yeah. to the UFO question, you know, either, you know, and that's, that's not to say that people who, who have those kinds of, uh, of narratives are, are liars or are, you know, uh, or are, I don't know, selling something like may Stan Romanek may or may not be doing, uh, mm -hmm. but by then I, I was written. To be honest, I wasn't really that interested in his story. You know, I, I was hearing about yeah, the, the 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 formulas he was getting, you know, through hypnotic uh, hypnotic regression, whatever. And they were like, well, fine, whatever, you know. So I'm I'm, I'm not a I'm not a scientist. What can I say about those those kind of things? They could mean anything. And then obviously. That came the big blunder of the uh, peekaboo video, 
And uh, to the people who are not aware of it, it has to be said that first, before uh, the the video that you can see in the documentary that we are discussing right now, the one that is on Netflix, there were, uh, like you said, Soraya, different versions of it. Like because right. for some reason he wanted, he didn't want to disclose the actual one. I don't know. There was the quote unquote recreation that they played on, like Larry King. I remember exactly. seeing that and thinking how silly the whole thing was. Yeah. And then the actual one looked even sillier, you know, even yeah, right. fakier. So by then I was saying, that's it, you know, who cares about this guy? So uh, forward to this evening when I, when I decided to watch this uh, documentary, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a mixed bag. Definitely it's very well produced. I think it's, uh, you know, from the point of view of, of uh, production, I think the the people behind it did a, a fine job at, at it in trying to sell his story. Uh, there were certainly a, a few uh, pieces of evidence that would even someone like me who's been interested in this phenomenon for so many years uh, go and pause and say, hmm, now that is an interesting video, you know. I mean, like the first one they they showed, like there's kind of like a globular thing video in plain in, in plain sight, and a few other videos of orbs or or red light, and say, you know, that's kind of interesting. But definitely, there's other pieces of so-called evidence they show in which in which you say, well, that was so easily faked, or that could be so easily fake, you know, with a laser pointer or with, I mean, they show uh, images or of um, uh, orbs. No, no, no. Uh, these uh, containers of medicines, you know. Uh, oh, of, yeah. That were apparently melted. And say, well, you know, I mean, if I have a torch or something, I could, I could mm. definitely see the effect, you know. Mm-hmm. What is all that? You're, all you're seeing is the after effect. You're you're just seeing them filming it after whatever happened. Yeah, exactly. And that's, like, that's what you see again and again and again and again and again. You you you, you uh, they 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 tell you you know what? There's some kind of like weird hybrid girl appeared to stand and gave him a bouquet, gave him a bouquet of flowers and this right. And, and they then show all you a see picture of the, with the flower. With the mm-hmm. flower smile and like, okay, yes. and that's evidence of what exactly. And, and where yeah. and where was he? Supposedly he was at some kind of UFO festival or, or conference when that happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean it will be so easy for me to to, to I mean debunk or you know uh, uh, criticize everything about the, the documentary. Because right now it's with him, because of his uh, particular situation, it's like shooting a fish in a barrel. You know, I mean, the guy, uh, and um, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but the guy, by, by the epilogue, uh, someone who is learning about his story for the first time will also learn that he is being currently prosecuted for uh, charges of uh, child pornography. Mm-hmm. Possessing and distributing. Yeah, mm-hmm. which in, in our society is kind of like the lowest of the low. If you will say, you know, I mean, drug trafficking, they will say, well, you know, maybe, you know whatever. Uh, child pornography, oh, that's the yeah. lowest of the no-no, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't want to do that, you know. I mean, we will, uh, I don't want to say if the guy is guilty or not, but I, I don't know about that. You know, we will have to say until the, the trial is actually carried out. I'm yeah. trying to see this from the story that is given, the so-called evidence that is given. Um, uh, it, 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 I have to say, it's kind of like a mixed bag. I was uh, uh, speaking with a friend of mine before we went uh, and started the recording, and he 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 said, you know, with that with uh, Romanek's case, it's kind of like a like a like a bag of crap in crap in which 
there might be a few pearls inside of it, but you know, but <laughs> some people would not bother to dig in. And you know, maybe that is because the the guy is a con artist, or maybe it's because that is the self negating nature of the phenomenon, you know, that for some reason it seems to uh like discount the so-called perfect cases or the cases with the most evidence with equal disarming cross evidence against it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing when there's a little segment where they're, you know, interviewing different ufologists and they uh, center on Chuck, Chuck Zukowski. And he makes this statement that, well, if only 20% of the Stan Romanek story is true or really happened, that's still like, you know, miraculous or worth research. And I'm like, if you had a pool that was 80% urine and 20% water, would you <laughs> suggest that someone swim in it? You know? <laughs> no, you just... that's the desperation of the field. That's yeah. the desperation in which we're and, and people like uh, Paul Kimball will say no. If a guy is faking, you know, just 20% of, of the evidence he's presenting, he's already dismissible. You know, he mm -hmm. you can't use him. To support your case of uh, non-human interference in, a, right. in our planet. Well, and <clears throat> Adam, you had said to me that you wondered if it was like the you know, poltergeist cases, where you do have a little bit of trickery when the phenomena starts to die down, and this is kind of a known thing. But I think you know, I have yeah. a hard time with any of this, any of his stuff. Like maybe he did see a UFO initially. That was a legitimate unknown. And then from there, he just went, wow, look at the attention I'm getting. I'm going to keep seeing them. And they st stated in the beginning, he is, has 195 UFO sightings. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's no detail there. So you can't look at them and go, what What were these UFO sightings? Right. They just kind of make that as a broad statement. Well, well here, here's the thing, in my opinion, about him. And I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here in a little bit, but. I think that he has had real experiences. Mm -hmm, so here's mm -hmm. someone that has had some real experiences and, you know, we've constantly debated on this show on everybody else's show, the nature of those experiences, what them, what they might be. So he believes, okay, it's space aliens, whatever. So he starts to get a little bit popular and then he starts to say, well, I've had these experiences, but I have to justify them somehow. And I think it just becomes a vicious cycle, right? I mean, he's got a he's got an army of people that he has to const feel like he constantly has to impress. And then how? And then the other question is, how much money is he is he getting out of these people? Um, is he getting support from these people? So does he feel the need to constantly produce? Obviously, he does if he's making these kind of hokey videos, like we discussed. And some of the other hokey stuff where he says that he's got these pictures of these hybrid children and one of them looks like he took like a picture and stapled it to the boards on his yeah. deck. Oh, you yeah, know, that, yeah, that, yeah. That was one of the worst ones. I was like, wow, that looks like I could just go outside and do that right now and, and, and amaze the whole UFO um, UFO community. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Does he feel like he has to constantly perform or did he feel like he has to constantly produce and i'll say the answer is yes so that's where that that's where the hokiness and the hoaxing comes in but the thing is this also feeds into things that i've been reading and reframing the debate and which i'm going to get into with robbie graham and with red pill on sunday is these ideas about the ufo community are these ufo conferences being basically like a religion I mean, they really are in so many ways that you have this, not necessarily a UFO cult, like in the old days, but you have the UFO community becoming this religion in and of itself, such as all these people that believe in San Romanek and the things that he's doing, like the picture that he says, oh, this little girl came to the house and we all saw this picture, but, uh, he, but, wrote, but Stan walked down the hall and the picture erased itself. I mean, that's, that's true believer mentality is what well, that is. And, and let's look at that for a minute. Cause that, that one struck me as particular, particularly interesting because there were other people there who were swearing up and down. Oh, we saw right. the photo and what they did not see is the girl. 
they did not see him take the photo. He just, yeah. he went outside mm -hmm. when he wasn't supposed, it was, and I think they said they, they were trying not to leave him alone. So if anything happened, there would be a witness. And then mm -hmm. he kind of snuck away outside and was standing in the driveway. And when they found him, you know, he was like, oh, there was this girl. And he showed them the picture on the camera. And then they, they were all marveling at this. And they said, we'll put it on the computer so we can see a bigger, bigger version of it. And it supposedly deleted itself. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, it wouldn't be hard for someone to delete the photo, but he could have taken that photo at any time. And he may have known blown up, it may not look so good. So he just deleted it and went, oh, and, and I remember one of the people saying the photos after it were there and the photos before it were there. And I'm thinking, right, because you can delete one photo at a time. But also, why were there photos after it? I thought this just happened. And, right. you know, I want to give people like Alejandro Rojas and Leo Sprinkle and, and some of the other ufologists that were on the documentary the benefit of the doubt. You know, I know during I the why. editing process, things can be taken out of context. You know, maybe they make it seem like they believe more of it than they really do. But the way they present themselves are the way they're presented in the documentary. I'm like, how are you guys so on board with this? Because and it, you, yeah. yeah, and it seems like the those. Uh, uh, recordings of uh, 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 the, the, the views of those people, they were taken a, lo a long time ago. Like mm -hmm. uh, I see Alejandro in, in this documentary and I met him uh, a couple of years ago and he doesn't look like that anymore. I mean, I, I think that that uh, uh, recording was made, I don't know, uh, a long time ago, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how many years ago, and uh, mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see if he uh, feels the same way about uh, Alejandro. And there were all, also other things about uh, the documentary that you know bothered me. For example, the the so-called Audrey calls these uh, mm -hmm. electronic mm -hmm. voices of a, yeah. a, a female voice that kind of like had a, a, a an English accent and. The moment I, I listen to that, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of video games, guys. You know, I'm a I'm a gamer, and kind of like uh, something that at 43 years old is not is not that embarrassing anymore, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, listening to that voice, the so-called Audrey call, it had a really really uh, strong resemblance to the voice that you hear. In a in a video game that was a very popular at the time, there was Half Life Two. Mm -hmm. mm. That that okay. was placed when the Combine, you know, uh, appeared. You know, the Combine is this like strike force of a uh, human alien, you know, kind of like mi uh, military police force that that you, the character, has to have has to have to fight against. And uh, that voice was the one that gave the 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 combine the orders like you know go engage sterilize and contain whatever you know it was that this kind of like monotone you know not uh, kind of voice and it, it had the same kind of like uh tone at this other call so it it makes you wonder you know who is faking this because there's really a lot of this stuff that is being faked is it is, is it him who is being faked or is someone who is maybe, you know, uh, playing a con against him? And the fact that he, uh -huh. something that also I, I listened to him, to it, uh, I was taking notes when I, while I was listening to the, to, the, to the documentary, he said that he comes from a, a military family background, you know, and, oh, and I did not our, catch that. Yeah. Okay. You know, that kind of like rings some bells because say, well, yeah. you know, maybe there was something going on there. There maybe he was subjected to something while he was in some military base as a kid. Well, I, I know that one of the Audrey conversations, I made the note during it that it sounded obviously scripted. Like his reactions to it. It was like yeah. he was reading from a script. It wasn't natural. Totally. Uh, the way he responded to things, it sounds like it was all written out and he was reading from a script. But the, yeah. the thing you mentioned about his, I don't want to psychoanalyze Stan Romanek too much because I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist. So, but mm -hmm. in one, on one hand, there's some little tidbits that he drops in the documentary 
that make me think that he has definitely went through some sort of severe trauma as a child because he talks mm -hmm. about being in these special education classes and being yeah, locked the in the closet. Yeah, yeah and being beat up and, and, and living in East Denver or whatever he said. Yeah. yeah, and it's obvious that he has sort of, I don't know, like a need to impress people or it, it's sort of like a like he's got serious self-image issues and and sort of craves attention and because there's this one the one part where he gets into the fight with the black ops guys so he wants us to believe that he manages to single-handedly fight off a group of highly trained black op operatives <laughs> with a bicycle chain and they mm -hmm. apparently know kung fu yeah and yeah. if you uh, and the interesting thing is, if you actually look into that that police record that he filed, they had no real evidence that that happened, and they did not buy it at all, and thought that he was sort of making that whole thing up. Well, well, the scary thing about that would be if he didn't get into a fight with these black op black ops kung fu knowledgeable people, then uh, he beat himself up, and that's some real psycho that's some real psychological issues. Mm -hmm. But where where well, I, where I, I was going to go with the whole um, devil's advocate thing was to say that it, I, I, have any of you guys ever read Robert Guffey's Camellio? Are you guys familiar no. with that? I'm um, familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. vaguely. Uh, I mean, Camellio is a book any I think anybody should read because basically it follows a friend of. of of Robert Guffey's that was basically gang stalked and had all this weird crap happen to him. And it, it kind of reminds me a lot of some of the stuff that San Romanek said that he was experiencing. And when, um, red pill said, you got to wonder if somebody's messing with him, that could possibly be it. That could, there could possibly be a connection there. You know, it, it makes me wonder, you know, these, these, this disinformation stuff that goes on, and we know that, 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 that kind of thing has happened, Project Beta stuff, Richard Doty, all that stuff that, that, that people that are the Air Force or whoever is interested in making the UFO community look rid as ridiculous as possible. It could be that they're... ...if that's a possibility. Say, say that again, Adam. I lost you there for a moment. Oh, well, I would have to say I'd have to say that um, I wonder if there's if, if some if this is some just kind of disinformation campaign or some reason to make the or there's a motive to make the UFO community just look absolutely absurd, and right. so they may have targeted someone like Stan Romanek mm. because they know that he's absurd already, and so they begin to make him believe. Oh well. You know, you're getting these calls from this Audrey person, or you're getting your calls from your hybrid, these calls from your hybrid children, but it's actually somebody in some, you know, who knows, Fort Meade, maybe, uh, it, you know, who knows? So just some special ops division that, that basically is their whole idea. The whole thing to do is just keep tabs on somebody and drive them insane or just make them look ri ab abnormally ridiculous. Well, you know, Adam, on the what? other hand, you know, if Romanek presents himself as a victim and yeah. presents himself as being persecuted, um, it helps deflect criticism of his stories because, you know, people start to feel sorry for him. Uh, they start yep. to empathize with him. And right, yeah. something you mentioned about the self-inflicted thing, I mean, his marks from the abduction, his, you know, scoop marks or whatever they look just like cigarette burns yes they do i know like yeah. i i used to Oof. put out cigarettes on myself as a party trick when i was a wild youth and uh they look just like that yeah see that that shows that shows that there may be that there is some kind of psychological issues going on with this guy mm -hmm. something wider would... than than just being a hoaxer and trying to impress the ufo community but this guy probably just... has something wrong with him I would suspect that he's probably a little bit of a narcissist, uh, possibly a psychopath. Yeah. And he just, and, and a compulsive liar on top of that. So even when he talks about growing up, we don't know if any of that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, like when he's talking about getting beaten up by gangs and stuff like that, we don't, we don't know mm -hmm. if that's true because look at all the other stuff he's lied about. He's obviously a compulsive liar. Um, 
there's the bruises from the abductions. As, as you said, they look like cigarette burns to me. None of this stuff looked, and, and the thing is you don't get those things from uh, other abduction accounts, you know? Like, you don't have all these physical bruises, injuries, and all this other stuff when other people have abduction accounts, only him, Good which point. suggests there's there's something odd going on there. There's the, right. where he says, oh, we got we got a, a video of a UFO beaming a light down, and you look at that light, and it's like, that looks like a flashlight. It's, it is a flashlight. It's 100%. It's, you, it's yeah. got the pattern of an incandescent bulb, and the fact that yep. it's mm-hmm. shaking that much, that's somebody uh-huh. holding it. I mean, if it was on a, uh-huh. if it was on some sort of ship, it would be completely stable and still, because it would be, like, bolted to something, you know? But it's or it would around. be moving, or it'd be moving smoothly if they were using it like a spotlight. Yeah, this exactly. Go, this goes back exactly to what Jack Brewer has said. That he has said that so many of these UFO researchers, because they're in this belief system that the aliens are coming down and abducting people, that instead of instead of suggesting someone that they get some kind of psychological help, it doesn't happen. And therefore, the mythology perpetuates itself. Yes. And it seems yeah. to me that somebody like Stan Romanek, the dude probably needs some psychological help, but he doesn't get it because he's completely, as I said, in the cycle of belief with all these other people that want to believe that the aliens are here. I don't know. I don't know if Romanek believes that. I think Romanek is using this. I think it's, you know, like I said, I, he may have seen a UFO once. And realized, oh, hey, people are interested in this. And that narcissism yeah. just kind of kicked in. And he doesn't care who he hurts. If, you know, if he has any, any bit psychopath or sociopath in his personality, he's not going to care who he hurts with all this. He's just going to run with it. Right. Exactly. Well, you know, like, I mean, if you tell a lie for long enough, you start to believe it. And it's possible mm-hmm. that he has mm-hmm. completely bought into this. Mm-hmm. And, and like mm-hmm. Adam said, you know, thanks for saying that. I'm like, how... How much responsibility can these researchers take on themselves for feeding into this complex and and yeah and allowing this like farce to continue? Right, because he because by now he could completely believe it mm-hmm. because all of a sudden he believes, oh, I'm special mm-hmm. and I can get away with anything that I want to. I mean, he's at least admitted that he hoaxed one thing, right? I guess that he couldn't get away with some TV interview where he okay, said so- that the that the knives were flying. Which they didn't even no, talk no, about no, in the no. documentary. No, what happened, it was it, it was after this documentary was filmed, because he looks much older in that interview. Okay. Um, he's sitting there, and the guy asks him some question, and he wanted to kind of distract attention from it. He has a pen in his right hand, and it's on oh, yeah. camera, just, just barely. And he flicks it backwards, so it hits the shelves behind him, and then he jumps and goes, what, what was that? that? Oh, yeah. please. <laughs> and... So the guy, the guy who was interviewing him had him on again. And I watched this, this little clip where he's, he's asking him about that. And he's like, well, I couldn't talk about that because they were saying they were going to kill me and stuff if I said anything. So I just did that to, to make myself look bad so that, you know, you wouldn't take me seriously because I was fearing for my life. Yeah. Mm. One, one section in it. I don't know if you guys caught this. Um, I, I, I already knew about this the child pornography charges. I already knew about this. I didn't know quite know the details. I just knew that he would have been accused of having it. But there's one part where he's talking about, I think it's the grandpa thing, the the second full bodied alien. Which by yeah. the way, I which by the way, when I was in Roswell, I saw a lot of those. And uh <laughs> <laughs> the but he's talking about that and he talks about uh well I thought it was my step child, my stepson walking around naked and yeah. i was i was gonna i was i was picking up my camera my to, re, to record him and he kind of oh yeah because himself. i was gonna blackmail him yeah 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 what the yeah. hell yeah. is that well, I'm, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like i'm like uh <laughs> what yeah what kind of reaction is that like that's that not a normal reaction to that you know that's yes. not what you would do <laughs> i mean that's yeah i was like uh that's 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 uh, that was really unsettling and he kind of catches himself too because i guess I guess maybe that was filmed. Uh, I had a feeling that was maybe filmed after like the charges and you know, that would have been almost an admission of guilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and about the charges themselves, I did read uh, on Stokes. They were talking, they actually put out an, uh, um, an article after yes. the, the, they came out on Netflix, the documentary. 
And they said the you know their whole thing is oh, we got uh, we got this downloaded onto our computer by the big bad government, which there are cases of that happening. That's true, but also they own they also found USBs laying around in his apartment yes. that had it on it too. It wasn't just on his physical hard drive. So so the story, as far as I can tell, first of all, on, on the documentary, they were very much defending stan of the you know sure and he is he is innocent until proven guilty let's not forget that but they uh you know they're they're taking quotes from like info wars and before it's news talking about how the government's hacking into people's computers and putting child pornography on it to set them up but the few articles that they quoted that were legitimate news sources were talking about a virus that did exist probably still does exist since they don't necessarily go away that would indeed hack into your computer and put, you know, child pornography on it. However, it's not going to put it on USB sticks. Stan was being yeah. investigated for a while. This is not something that just popped up overnight. Um, and then he tried to go, go to uh, sort of attack the guy who was the police lieutenant. Or oh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, actually. Uh, what we call it? Uh, Jack Brewer did a great article on this, and he was actually supposed to be my guest tonight, but he had a call off at the last minute due to some personal matters. So hopefully, I'm going to have him on soon. Um, yeah, what some would describe as a rather typical convoluted attempt to defect, deflect. Oh no, that's that's the wrong thing. Let's go down a little further here. Um, yeah, Roman X supporters continue to allege that Koopman, the cop set up stam the theory is a contradiction to the fact that koopman and fellow officers investigated romanek due to a tip initially received from homeland security and basically the conspiracy narrative that koopman was out to get romanek doesn't make any sense um and they were investigating him for a few years before they finally had gone in and raided his house and there was one point where his hard drive was wiped clean and they thought maybe he was tipped off by somebody at the police department as well um, and when they went in again, that's when they found all the child pornography, they found the USB sticks and so on and so forth. So it doesn't look really good for him. And the fact that his, his, you know, explanation is the government's out to get him. Right. You know, I mean, it fits the rest of his narrative. Sure. Th this, sure because this, they show in, in, in the documentary how at one point someone, you know, some people in a black, uh, get off from a black man. And punch <laughs> him and, and tell him to, to keep his mouth shut, quote unquote. Yeah. So. Now, the couple of things that, that were interesting. Um, well, actually, one, one of the things I noticed is his wife kept saying that she can't tolerate liars. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, are you in on this or are you really just so fooled by this guy? If you listen to him just sit and talk, he's very charismatic. Now, Soraya, I, I made a note about that. And her mm -hmm. reaction during that segment scream to me that like she doesn't look at the camera like she kind of turns away she's like i just don't suffer liars like I, I i really do wonder like how much his wife is like basically fed up complicit. with it yeah or just oh. like not necessarily complicit but like I, I think she understands that it is all a farce and i wonder if she just is like worried about him or like understands that he has some sort of you know, illness or something. And she's like trying to protect him just, you know, out of a sense of loyalty sure. and love. But yeah, her reactions during that segment just screamed to me that she like knows that that's something we, like is going on with him and that she. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah it's ahead. interesting because uh, there is a, uh, during the whole documentary, there is this idea of, this whole thing with uh, another, a third party, Victoria Albright. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I was about to bring that up. Yeah. 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 Apparently, you know, if, if you follow the narrative, you know, Victoria and Stan is, are the ones who have had, got seven, you know, hybrid children, you know, in, yep. inside of the <laughs> alien ships or something to that effect. But anyway, they, in the documentary, they are clear to show that they hold some kind of really special connection. And uh, Lisa Romanek has been shown as someone who is very tolerant of this unusual, uh, unusual relationship that his husband has, has with another woman. 
And mm -hmm. that is a really diff difficult thing that he, she has to put up with. So I don't know. I mean, the documentary ha makes a good job of showing her as someone who is uh, very tolerant and supportive of, uh, of uh, her husband, you know, under really, really difficult situations. Mm -hmm. And and that's, you know, that's another unique thing here where he supposedly fathered these children with this girl, Victoria, and then met her in real life and they recognized each other. Yeah. So I would really like to know a little more about how they met, how they recognized each other. Like, did she recognize him and did he go with it or did... Was there some kind of mutual recognition or did he start talking to her and then go, you're the one I was with on the ship, you know, mm -hmm. and bring her into his little, into his lie. You know what I mean? Mm. Like how much, you know, I think it's significant that he met her at a UFO conference. Um, yeah. So if she already was an experiencer or, you know, an abductee, it's how much of, his story involving her was suggested to her by him. Yes. It's not just, they just ran into each other on the street. They're like, Oh mm -hmm. my God, I know you from the ship. Mm -hmm. I don't and know. I've it's never it's very difficult to assert thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is because we don't know enough about that whole situation. They didn't really get into it too much. Um, yeah. the only thing I've ever even heard of that was close. And I, uh, what's her name? Uh, Artie six killer Clark wrote about a story where the guy was on a ship and this not hypnotically, recovered like he actually just remembered being taken by the space people or the star people or whatever and he remembered seeing this woman who was absolutely beautiful and had this incredible dress and uh, you know years later he met this woman and she didn't remember ever being ever having experiences like that but he you know he knew this you're the one for me and they ended up getting married and stuff now you could say that he was having an altered state experience and saw something, you know, down a path. Maybe he was supposed to go. Maybe he was abducted by aliens in some way. But this is more visceral in a sense because it's just like, oh yeah, we recognized each other, friend. We have seven kids together, and they're up in outer space with the aliens. And it's like, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we—they didn't really get into it enough to know. Get, get any real substance on there. The other thing that I found intriguing was his leg, where he claims that he fell and severely injured his leg, mm. and he was going to have uh, surgery on it, and they took him and healed it. So if you look, yeah. I, I read up on this a little bit, and if you, actually in the movie itself, in the documentary, if you pause it at a certain point, you can read the document. Um, the medical document doesn't say anything about him actually needing surgery, only that he was being mm. referred to an orthopedic doctor, not a surgeon. And they never interviewed the doctor who diagnosed him with, you know, what he claims was a torn ACL. So, right. so it could have been a psychosomatic thing. Or just a, or he could have just invented it. Or faked it, yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, he may have just sprained his leg or something, and, it, you know, it wasn't serious yeah. enough for surgery. But in this sort of you know, world that he's living in, he has to, he's exaggerating things. And so in the documentary, he says, oh, I tore it. You know, I was never going to walk again. I was going to be a cripple when really might have just had a sprain. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 And there, well, there they, are cases, there are cases in paranormal literature of, of spontaneous healings. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you were on the round table where I read the clip from Dr. X that Valet talks about in Dimensions, where he oh, was yeah. healed mm -hmm. instantly. I, I know I Red Pill, you were, right? Mm -hmm. When we were talking about that. And uh, also, there was a woman in France who had terminal cancer, and she literally died of it, had a near-death experience, came back, and the cancer was gone. Mm. And she has all the medical records and everything showing what her cancer was. Uh, you know, she can, she can prove all of this, mm -hmm. whereas this guy... You know, you don't you don't have a website full of documents that can be verified from him. Mm -hmm. But you see, Sarai, the thing is, he read he's probably read that material. He's probably Possibly. pretty well versed in all this stuff, and he knows. Maybe, it. I mean, and he th there's a point in the documentary. Stories. There's a point in the documentary when he is on camera saying that most stuff, the most uh, uh, paranormal stuff happens with a lot of people around, right? And yeah. you can interpret that uh, in two different ways. You can either say, well, you know, he sees that there is a lot of people gathering around to, to fake something. So he has a lot of uh, 
corroborating evidence, corroborating witnesses, you know, to mm-hmm. his story, or maybe there's something of a, a gathering of energy in, into manifesting something in the way that I suspect that Stephen Greer does during the C City. Uh, right, right. Uh, but, conference or, or roundings. But Greer is doing it with intent, whereas Romanek is not. And when he says other people are around, you know, there were, a, there were other people around when he took that photo of the girl in the driveway, but there really weren't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they were in the house. They came out. They supposedly saw the photo. I believe that they saw the photo. It was probably a photo he faked days earlier and then deleted before it could be blown up. And then that just adds to the mystery. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I mean, it, all, it reminds me a lot of, you know, stuff around the kind of experiments that James Randi performed where he would fool researchers and stuff just using basic sleight of hand. And, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. you just remove the researchers for a minute. You know, you, you, you have things set up. It's, it's not that hard to do, especially on a willing audience. I mean, that's, uh, again, these researchers, they want to believe right. the story's exactly. true. And it makes it so much easier to fake this stuff. Exactly. Um, there are the equations that he supposedly wrote down from hypnosis, and we're not we're not even getting going to get into the problems with hypnosis right now. I'm going to save that for when Jack Brewer is on. <laughs> I've de- I, I've dealt with the hypnosis issue for actually, you know, I mean, I didn't realize there was such an issue with hypnosis till I had um, Paul Kimball on talking about it and talking about mm. Emma Woods and stuff. I think in the first year I was on, and I was just. I was so thrown because I never really questioned it. And I think that's, that's something a lot of people, they just don't question. Oh yeah. You can use hypnosis to recover memories and you can't. Well, I shouldn't say you can't. I I suspect that it is possible, but you can't tell the difference between a recovered memory and a false memory is the problem. That's a problem. Um, Mm -hmm. Jeff Ritzman put the final nail in the coffin for me on that. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but he supposedly, you know, wrote down the Drake equation. Here's the other thing about Romanek. I think he's a smart guy. I do not think that, you know, they're talking about him being dyslexic, mm-hmm. but that doesn't, that doesn't mean he has any kind of, uh, intellectual impairment. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. and, and so he even somewhere states that he has an exceptionally high IQ and it's like, yeah, I'm betting you do. You're probably really freaking smart and know how to manipulate people. So all he had to do is pull up the Drake equation, remember it, and then write it down. Of, oh, this is what I was given. And then he writes saying like times 100 at the bottom. Yeah, the times 100 <laughs> cracked me up. That was just like, I was like, yeah. it was one of those things where it's like, you know, you can string someone along for so much, but then you do the one thing that sort of just tips over the bowl. And now that, that times 100, I was like, what? <laughs> you could have just written the Drake equation and then left it at that. Adding that just made it. You know what? Something. It bothers me the most about uh, the whole thing with the equations. It was that uh, I realized that some of the symbols he had uh, drawn looked a lot like the UMO symbol that I'm really fascinated with. So Mm -hmm. I don't know about that, you know. So it's not that I use that to either dismiss or corroborate his story. To me, that's uh, an interesting tidbit. I, but he would have, he likely would have known about that. That's not ah, that obscure. I do think the equations are interesting on one level. Um, I mean, he, he wrote down, I guess, uh, the one uh, scientist or the one doctor said that he wrote down the uh, Alcubier sort of warp drive equations. Yeah, Miguel um, Alcubier. Yeah. Yeah. But those, I mean, those were known back in like, I think 93 uh, is when yeah, he came up with those. Sure. So, I mean, they weren't like new. And they, you know, that, that sort of a Kubier drive is pretty popular in terms of like popular science. I mean, a lot of people know about that. And some of the little drawings he was doing looked like sort of, you know, drawings of sort of wormhole diagrams that I'd seen in different places before. Um, you know, something interesting, I think, about hypnosis, you know, as, aside from the fact that, you know, it's, it's not a tool to stimulate recall, but it can be used to bring up information that someone may have not consciously remembered like you know some people have like what is it eidetic memory where they're able to remember everything they see um 
I, I don't like using that as an explanation because I think that gets trotted out a lot by debunkers. But I, I do wonder how many of these things he might have just seen in popular science magazines or had seen in books about it. Um, and had simply sort of remembered that information during a hypnosis session and then conflated it with his experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. possible too. And like I said, I think most people in this documentary are underestimating just how smart this guy is. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a lot of, I mean, if, if what we're saying or what we're speculating about is true and that, you know, a lot of this is faked, uh, it, it does take someone that's pretty intelligent and, and able to manipulate people, uh, able to hide things, you know, it's sort of like basic stage magic techniques. It, it takes a lot of brains to do this kind of thing, especially to keep it running for so long. But yeah. the thing is you can't keep going forever. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's the important part of this mm -hmm. is you cannot I mean, keep going forever with it. Eventually you're going to get caught. There's going to be a hole somewhere. Mm -hmm. Imagine if someone like David Blaine wanted to, hoax this type of stuff mm -hmm. you know i mean someone who's that good and of course honestly admits these are tricks mm -hmm. i don't have the faintest idea how he does most of his tricks i mean they they are mind-boggling in in some of them but if he were to if he were the type of person that stan romanak is where he wanted to you know hoax this stuff it would be probably imperceptible mm -hmm. to to the real, you know, to a real thing, you would just be going, wow, you know, look, how would that, how does that even happen? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, think what you will about him, about James Randi, but that sort of was the idea behind Randi's experiments with parapsychological researchers and that, yeah, that yeah. he, you know, had trained these people in basic mentalism and stage magic techniques and had sent them out to these uh, parapsychology researchers and was sort of showing um, that when you have researchers who are not following stringent protocols and methodology and want to believe in a topic or have some sort of bias in it, it's easy to fool people. And, yes. you know, it's, that's something that I, I think any person who's getting into this topic or trying to do serious research on this kind of topic has to remember that you, unless you're just speculating on things, if you're really trying to, to pull data on something, you have to separate yourself from the topic and you have to have strict protocols. You know, you can't let things slide. The problem with Randy is that a, he had this sort of debunker approach that if mm -hmm. he could fake something, that everything must be fake. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and I, I've always compared that to finding out, you know, to like, maybe you watch a movie for the first time. And you're thinking, Oh man, that guy just punched <laughs> that guy. And then you find out, no, no, it was fake. And so then you assume that everyone punching anyone ever, ever, is fake you know you mm -hmm. see someone punch someone in a bar and you go no no that's fake because I, I know they can fake it so mm -hmm. that must be fake uh the other thing about randy is he's intellectually dishonest yeah I mean, you look at what he did to rupert sheldrake where he claimed to have replicated his data when he did nothing of the sort uh -huh. mm -hmm. um following his own belief system that this stuff doesn't exist so he can just get away with you know lying about it yeah well right. he falls into the same trap where he's yeah uh, they, he has they, to they, produce the ego these, trap uh, I mean, yeah, they, exactly. they, they get attention by doing something and they have to follow that, you know, no matter what. Maybe Stan Romanek uh, got attention by claiming these sort of things. And James Randi got attention by, you know, debunking this sort of, debunking mm -hmm. this sort of things. I don't know. I mean, it, ego is something that you have to be very aware of when you man deal with this sort of stuff and when you uh, see this uh, documentary and when you see how uh, Romanek is portrayed again and again, oh, you know you are different, Starseed. You know you're Star special. Yeah. That, that, that's the kind of thing that really robs me, robs me in the wrong way. Yeah, that yeah, I wrote yeah. down in my notes that it seemed like he had sort of a messiah complex and that these mm -hmm. people around him are feeding this. And like the one lady, uh, Paola, she was sort of just like, you know, I believe Stan's important and then he has a message for the world and, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> that's a real dangerous road to go down. Yeah, and mind you, that doesn't, doesn't mean that he is faking all of these. Maybe mm -hmm. he is being fooled by some tricksterish entities, mm -hmm. you know that want to feed off of his uh, his needs to be his need to be special and are leading him leading him astray 
for mm-hmm. some dubious uh, purpose. That's a distinct possibility. Mm-hmm. That possibility is always there. Sure, sure. I, I would bet money on the fact that he's just a very brilliant hoaxer. And it, sure, his hoaxes sure. aren't even that good. He, and at some point, I think he realized they don't have to be good. You know, he doesn't have to put a ton of effort right. into making these things look real because people are going to believe him. Cause, well, it cause certainly we, reminded me sort of the early, like kind of like the, the way the internet was when, when he was doing these <laughs> things. Sort of the, <laughs> the, the, that generation, you know, the screaming alien in the fridge generation of the uh, yeah. sort of you know, uh, coast-to-coast uh, website. I was I was very young during that that generation, but that was like right when I first got the internet, and I, I ate that kind of stuff up. It was just like you know low yeah. quality images, grainy videos, and it was like people didn't know about things like Photoshop or how easy it is to really fake this kind of stuff. And, and it's especially people in that era, I think, just ate this kind of story up. That, that's exactly my point. Uh, my point about it is is that. You know, we look at this and we say, oh, that's just, that's just a terrible hoax. That's just, it's awful. You know, mm-hmm. it looks cheesy. It is cheesy. But, you know, now, even now, there's going to be a, you know, 15 year old kid that's going to watch this in his, in his bedroom mm-hmm. and say, oh my God, the aliens must be real. There's actual proof. Yeah. I mean, you I know? looked on Twitter. So this, I, this, I searched this for his name on Twitter and happen. saw, yes. yeah, I searched for his name on Twitter and they were just, Tons of people like you got to watch this documentary. Aliens are real. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, it's the it's the I want to believe. I, mm-hmm. You know, and if, if you give anybody even the slightest bit of something, they will believe it. I mean, I have, I you know, I have friends out there that will post all these videos that I know are completely fake, and I'm just like intelligent people. I'm mm-hmm. like, how can you yeah. believe this? You, you, and and, this, it has and, nothing to do with intelligence. And, 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 yeah. and it's and it's and it's someone that I know that that is good with Photoshop and knows things can be faked, but still believes it. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Well, let's 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 do uh, final thoughts here. Let's let's start with Red Pill. What oh, about the gosh. mummies? The mummies. We, we're going to deal with that separately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mommy. <laughs> that, is, that has nothing to do with this documentary. This documentary was extraordinary, the Stan Romanek story, so you can check it out for yourself. But, uh, Red Pill, your, your final thoughts on this? My thought is go watch the, the documentary. Make your, your own opinion, as always. But after you watch the documentary, do your homework and... and and look for other stuff about Romanek online, uh, so you can give uh, have a more uh, <coughs> overall or general view about what his claims are. And at the end of the day, you know, there was a moment when one of the talking heads in the docu docu said that you know he was he or she w- uh, was equating Romanek like, or, or portraying him as the perfect contact. And my personal opinion, and I don't want that to be, you know, uh, something that uh, I don't think somebody, all of the, all of us uh, should believe that my personal opinion is that there is no such thing as a, per- as a perfect contact. For better or for worse, this phenomenon is so eluding, self negating, and tricksterish that we are deluding ourselves in thinking that there will all there will someday be a silver bullet, this one perfect contact, this one perfect, clear uh, photograph or video that will prove once and for all the reality of the UFO phenomenon. I don't think that is, uh, is true. I used to, you know what, once when I was young, but I don't, I don't anymore. I think that the, the phenomenon reveals itself gradually, generally, and very, I don't know, uh, tricksterishly and very uh in ways that defy our our 
language or defined our our, our way of uh, or of understanding things, but has definitely a very profound influence in our culture and society and civilization in the long run. So, I don't know. In the, I, I, I guess that at the end of the brand, I think that Romanic, it's then Romanic, whether, you know, true or not, whether guilty or not, it's not that important anymore. Ren? Well, I just, you know, I want to make it clear to people that, you know, we're not debunkers. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've experienced things in the, you know, in the, in the immortal words of Roy Batty, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to remove, like, like Red Pill said, your ego from this. If you're really wanting to study these type of events, you have to remember that not everyone is telling the truth and you have to remember that sometimes there are people who are trying to mislead you and you have to suspend your willingness to believe things sometimes and you have to take an objective point of view and you've still got to remain open i mean you know if somebody has a story to tell you you should listen to it without reservation you know look at the story and and weigh it for yourself and like red pill said go do your own research you know don't take everything at face value and you know, something like this story is important because you have people, you know, respected researchers, like, you know, Sprinkle's a respected guy, Mm. and you have their credibility damaged because they're so on board with this sort of, you know, obvious farcical story. And, Mm -hmm. you know, this this type of hoaxing and this, this willingness of people to accept these kind of stories completely and, and, you know, without reservation, sets back the study of this topic by decades. Adam? Well, I would say I agree with both of those statements. And I've already taken a um, cardboard cutout of a blue avian. (laughs) And uh, I I filmed it on my cell phone, um, slightly, um, slightly, slightly dark and uh, with a lot of whispering. And I've already sent it to MUFON, and I'm waiting for the results. <laughs> so um, since I'm, I'm leaving my integrity at the door, I may not be with you guys much longer. But I will be, make, <laughs> I will be making the, uh, the UFO conference circuit. So uh, I might throw you guys a bone at some point. <laughs> well, don't forget, Adam. You need, to, uh, you need to record yourself and then pitch shift it and then pretend you're your own hybrid daughter. <laughs> what, what, what was that? <laughs> my, my my thoughts on this on the documentary and on him i i honestly did not like the documentary i got about 20 minutes in and i think my reaction was oh my god how much longer is this oh it's another hour and 20 minutes <laughs> or no hour and 10 minutes whatever it was and i was just like oh man i don't know if i can get through this i you know Stephen greer whatever you may think of him his documentaries are very well done Mm-hmm. They're entertaining. They're, they're, this was a lot of, here's some bad video footage. Here's a phone call you can barely make out. You're reading most of the screen. And then the last half was a little better because it was actual interviews with people. And you got to get a feel for how charismatic Stan could be. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that's what he is. I think he's he's probably a bit of a psychopath. He's someone who's a narcissist who is, you know, may or may not have had one actual sighting of something odd and just ran with it and just kept going with it. And yeah. now that he's in trouble for other things, he's trying to kind of, you know, bring that in as his excuse. And I, and I don't think it's going to work. I mean, we'll see whether or not he gets proven guilty or innocent whenever that, that goes down. But, uh, it's dra- definitely a matter. I think where this is one of those things that drags ufology through the mud. And, uh, it's really unfortunate that being done the way it was and put on Netflix, it's going to be something that people will point to as, well, this is what ufology is. And it, it really is not what ufology should be. And I don't think really represents ufology as a whole. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I really thought that the documentary, when I, when I saw that it was on, I thought that it would be an unbiased look and it wasn't. Yeah. It was completely no, biased to his side. 
It wasn't, it, 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 it did not give any other, anybody that disagreed with him, any, there yeah. was no time for that. There was no one that disagreed with him in the entire yeah. documentary. And as I said, at the end, they, they used a lot of newspaper articles to, uh, uh, from not so reputable sources to kind of be like, oh, look, this stuff happens all the time. It's like, no, no, it doesn't. There was a virus that could potentially put child porn on your computer as well as screw you up. But that's, that's about where it ends. It's like I was, uh, I, it, it's kind of like I was watching The Mist, the TV series, which is unfortunately nowhere near as good as I hoped it was going to be. But uh, during, while it was running, it pops up with some, some clips, and I happened to pause on one of the clips, uh, like one of the promos, and it was Stephen King talking about how great the TV series is. And I'm thinking, <laughs> right, okay, well, thanks, Stephen, for plugging the thing that's based on your book <laughs> that you're probably getting residuals from. <laughs> I don't care how bad it is. Give me some money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank thanks. you. All right. Now, uh, well, you got our thoughts on that whole issue with Stan Romanek. As I said, you can watch the documentary on Netflix streaming. Uh, it's available other places like Amazon and stuff like that. The IMDb, the IMDb rating is abominably low. It's like a 1.5 or something like that. All right. Um so yeah, that's that. We will reschedule with Jack Brewer hopefully very soon, maybe as soon as next week. We'll see what's up. 